How I only studied two hours a day in medical school, which is a fucking lie. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So how do I internalize beliefs that my subconscious disagrees with? Okay. Okay. So you have some core beliefs about the world, right? Like you have some beliefs about how stuff works. Like psychologically, you know, what gets us therapists all hot and bothered is like, oh, like I don't love myself. And it's like, oh yeah, like tell me more. I'm like, yeah. yeah, like tell me more about how you don't love yourself. Like, that's like, that's the kind of like core belief that people have, right? And so someone's asking like, logically, sure, you can, this is the way I understand that question. Logically, you can understand that you should love yourself, but you can't change the fact that you don't love yourself. So how do you change this idea that- Is that Sam Sulek? Yeah, that was Sam Sulek. Uh, the 20 or 21 year old bodybuilder guy. Thanks for the donation, Sam. Like, you know you should love yourself. You know you should be your best friend. You know you should treat yourself with respect, but you're unable to. So how do you change that? And so I, I think that the best way to actually change this is a practice called Yoga Nidra, which is on our YouTube, which you guys can go back and watch. But this is what I want y'all to think about for a second. So how do we like learn? How does something change within our mind? How do we learn things? So I want you guys to, to think about if I'm studying a textbook and I read everything on the page, I don't necessarily understand. I don't understand the information, right? Like I can read the information, but I don't get it. So just think about this for a second. And then what happens is I read the page again, and I read the page again, and the fourth time I read the page, I get it. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So there's a difference between like reading the information and getting it. So let's just think about that because like sometimes you read the page once and you get it. So like, like just stop because this blows my mind. So one day I, I was thinking about this. I was like, holy shit. If I could figure out why sometimes I can read the page once and get it, and sometimes I read the page 10 times and I don't get it. Like, how the fuck does that work? Yeah, so internalizing and, un and understanding things might make it easier to remember something. But that's not going to necessarily be the case. Like, some things you understand but are fairly complicated. So you're going... And so you can internalize it just fine. You can understand it just fine. But because of the complexity, y you have to do things like write down notes, read those notes back, test yourself to really ingrain that into your memory. So, and on top of that, like, it's fucking medical school. You're not going to be able to understand things immediately just because it's going to be somewhat outside of the domain of knowledge that you already have. It's fucking complicated and hard to learn. So, yeah, you're not going to be able to fucking learn everything you need to know in medical school by only studying two hours a day. He's so full of shit. And if I can figure out how that works... Can I create a situation where I'm reading the page once every single time and I'm getting it? No. And how OP would that be? How OP would it be to read something and to understand it every single time? Yeah, it's it's not just about understanding. These are things that you need to have ingrained in your memory. So I can understand plenty of things. I'm not going to necessarily remember them. And I actually investigated it. And I figured it out. And then, thankfully, I went to med school. And I studied two hours a day in med school. No more. That is a fucking lie. Absolute bullshit fucking lie. Again, um, even if you had perfect, like, memory recall, like you had photographic memory, you could read something once and then remember it all without having to do any more studying. The sheer amount of, like, shit that you need to, like, study on a daily basis... Um, would require you to study more than two hours just because of time. So he's lying. Sometimes I studied more before a test or over the weekend. Two hours a day. All of my friends studying five hours a day, seven hours a day, eight hours a day. Staying. Yeah, so they were actually studying for that long, uh, and you probably were too. You're just lying. I got super late. Tons of caffeine. I studied two fucking hours a day. That's it. And then people say, oh, you, aren't you so smart, man? Like, oh my God, you must be a fucking genius. No, I'm not a fucking genius. Even if you're a genius, you'd have to study for more than that genius. This is important because you guys have done it too, right? You've read a page, you've read a page sometimes and it sinks in and other times it doesn't sink in. The only difference is I figured out what the difference between the two is. I figured out why I'm able to have it sink in and why other times it, it isn't. So now I'm going to ask you, no, no, no. I, you guys want the fucking answer T too bad. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you, you're going to figure it out. So I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think? So in what scenario could I read something 10 times and not understand it? You tell me. It's not just about uh, having a lack of understanding. Um, the issue is memorizing it. That's a different thing.
So yeah, he's full of shit. Um, he's basically talking to an audience that he knows is kind of stupid and ignorant, ignorant, and they can't like use their critical thinking skills to figure out that this is just stupid. Um, there are plenty of things that you can read and understand. It's just that you have to have it in your long-term memory, and that requires studying. Fucking liar, you need to apply the information. Understanding isn't the end or the all. This is so unbelievably dishonest who would fall for this shit. The whole point of taking an exam is applying the information. Memorizing and understanding is trivial. Yeah, that too. Um, you actually have to be able to apply it as well. Um, and that, again, takes practice. So... It's kind of like with math. Um, you could, like, when you first learned algebra um, and you learned all the tricks, like, yeah, you, you understand algebra, but you might have, like, certain questions on the math test that, like, kind of trick you or, like, or trip you up. That also requires, like, some degree of practice. So, um, yeah, he's full of shit in a lot of different ways. Um, for one thing, understanding something doesn't mean you're going to be able to memorize it. And even if you're able to understand and or memorize it, you still have to learn how to apply it properly. So he's absolutely full of shit. Um, he probably studied for five hours plus per day, at least. Um, probably more because he's stupid, but... Yeah, this this convinces the 15-year-old kids that are watching him, uh, who's, like, again, their only experience with schoolwork is, like, maybe high school, like grade 9 or 10, and, um, yeah, to them, oh, yeah, two hours, that sounds about right, because they're in high school. <laughs> Fucking retarded. Thanks for that donation, though, Unicorn Jizz. Okay, so let's say that I'm in a library, and the library is burning down, right? So people are saying distract. Please stay in that library that's burning down, if that ever happens to you. Act it. Okay, 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 chat, calm down. Distracted, right? So, like, the more, like, let's say that I'm studying and I just got broken up with my, like, my girlfriend just dumped me. How many times am I, am I going to have to read the page to understand it? Absolutely. What? So just think about that. So then let's say that, so this is what I did in med school. I would wake up at 4, 4, between 4 and 4.30 every day. I'm sorry, What? Lamau, he's saying because he meditates and focuses and isn't distracted, he can study for two hours a day. That's the special source. Yeah, that... You... I, I don't know how that would make sense. Because, again, the like you just need more time. So e even if you have perfect memory recall, you'd have to study for more than two hours. Uh, he's so full of shit. Thanks for the nation, Unicorn Jizz. And I would study between like 4.30 and 6.30 or 5 and 7. Did it first thing in the morning when my mind was completely clear. And I found that that was when my mind was the most focused. And I would meditate and do yoga in the morning. Super focused mind. Sit down and study. And I found that like 4 a.m. Absolutely. Four oh, okay. Meditate before studying. Then you like practically don't have to study. 4 a.m. Then I would study whatever, I, whatever the class was going to cover that day. I'd go through it before class. And then class became review. And if you guys want to know what's OP in school, it's having every day's class be review. And instead of having a review session, like you guys know how good a review session is before a test, right? Imagine every day of class was a review session. Yeah, that's retarded. Um, again, there's so much uh, information that can that you'd have to learn before class. You can't finish that in two hours. It becomes easy. And then the review session is like, you know, when you, like, you know, when you study for a test and you're like, man, I wish I could have gone to like two review sessions. Like, wouldn't it be cool? Like, imagine how well you would do on a test if instead of just having one review session before the test, you had like two review sessions a week apart. Like, how easy would, would school be? Be like way easier, right? Some people are even catching on to this in his chat. His OP recommendation is to do your readings, lol. Yeah. How do you study for only two hours? Uh, you study? <laughs> so class became the review session. And then the review session became the second review session. So I did pretty well. I didn't get straight A's in med school. I wasn't at the top of my class, but I did I did good enough. <laughs> That's what you want to hear from your doctor. Um, I barely studied. I wasn't at the top of my class, and I did just enough to graduate. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> right? There were some people who like did amazing. Like what I wasn't at the top of my class. Didn't get like a stellar step score. I mean, I got a good, pretty good step score, but it wasn't like anything crazy. 
you know, if I wanted to become like an orthopedic surgeon, like it would have been, you know, I would have been in the running, but it wouldn't have been like a lock. I mean, I had some friends who were just fucking geniuses. So it's all about the state. What do you mean you had some friends that were geniuses? Apparently they were studying for like five hours plus per day, whereas you were only studying for two hours. Like this guy is pathetic. Like he's such a fucking liar. Of mind. If you want something to sink into your mind and plant there and understand it, it's about the state of mind. So this is important. So I want you guys to imagine your mind like a pool of water that has dirt in it. And if you want to see to the bottom, which is what we kind of think of as the subconscious, the more that the water is moving, the more dirt is going to be stirred. So you need a still mind. So when I get dumped by my girlfriend or the library is on fire, what is happening in my mind? If there's a lot of activity, a lot of activity. So anything I try to put in there is not going to sink in because there's just all the shit in the way. So calm the mind and then you can plant something. Then you could plant it deep, right? Sometimes you have a conversation with someone and you are so tuned into that conversation that that experience fucking sinks. Yeah, his his brain is definitely filled with fucking dirt. That's for sure. Sin. Like I remember for me, this is gonna sound weird. I remember for me, like. Dumbass, he's literally telling you the strategy. I bet most people don't meditate in med school. They're always stressed. He eliminates the stress, and you don't think that would help? Fucking moron. What he's saying actually makes sense. You dense faggot. Uh, yeah, sure it does. Thanks for the donation, jackass. Is he a licensed doctor? Has he passed his boards? Yes, um, he's a psychiatrist and he is a medical doctor. So, uh, unless somehow he got away with lying about that, yeah, he is a medical doctor. If you actually look at his website, he does make some lies. Uh, he claims he's Harvard educated. He's actually not. He, uh... He worked as a teacher's assistant at Harvard, so he's lying about being Harvard educated. He wants to make it seem as though he uh, studied at Harvard. I think he went to a university that wasn't uh, even ranked in the top 50 in the country. I think it was in Mass, like Massachusetts, that he, uh, that he went to school. But he does kind of lie about his education, so um, he... So yeah, he did residency at Harvard. Are you sure about that? No, I don't think he did. Yeah, it, it was it was worded kind of weird on his website. It said he was a, he was I think he was a teacher's assistant at the residency program, but not I don't think he actually attended residency at Harvard. Um and no. And by the way, doing residency is different than um like actually studying to be a doctor. Residency is when you actually do doctor things but anyway an experience that sunk in and i was like this transformed like the way that i looked in the world is an ff2 or ff4 japanese there's this guy named cecil and he's a dark knight and he becomes a fucking paladin and that was like just the coolest thing in the world and my mind was focused and that thought he is so full of shit so like so far the only advice he's given on how to only study two hours a day in medical school is Focus on studying and study. <laughs> like, that's that makes no sense. That scene, that experience got planted so deep into my mind it can never be forgotten. And along with that was like all of this weird stuff about like salvation and like you can make it and you can recover your life and all that shit started with Cecil. FF4, Dark Knight, right? And so you've got to be focused. A focused mind will lead to change. And we can see that with, with um, if you guys watch the interview today, like you could tell what a bullshit. After, he, after he meditated, like it didn't sink in because he's just got all his thoughts. His thoughts are in the way. So how do you internalize? How do you take the things that you should believe and get them? To so literally everybody who's gone to medical school will tell you they're studying for five, six, seven, eight hours a day, if not more, uh, especially if they have hard assignments or a test is coming up or something. And then this guy says, oh, I was able to concentrate really hard. That's how I only had to study for two hours. Like, you honestly think no one else is fucking concentrating hard when they study, you fucking jackass? It's just so stupid. To a place from where your core beliefs are. So core beliefs are deep within your mind. Prim, prim. And so there's a practice called Yoga Nidra, which calms the... Good Hair is the name of the film. What is the real name of this psychiatrist? Um, yeah, Good Hair. That's the documentary. It's a good documentary. Um, his name is some weird Indian name. 
Um, Alok Kanogia. Yeah, Alok Kanogia. So, some weird Indian name. Thanks for the donation, though, Sam. The mind on the surface level. And then this is a part of Yoga Nidra that I haven't taught. Then you have something called the Sankalp. And, like, when you do Yoga Nidra and you do it well, you're, like, writing, you're, like, rewriting the code of your subconscious. So this is the other thing to understand. You guys understand, like, you have a mind, right? And, like, it sends thoughts up to you. Um. Says he's an instructor. Is that a professor? Scroll down, you'll see it. Yeah, so he used that word intentionally, instructor. Uh, that's not a professor. Um, Harvard trained psychiatrist. Uh, not a Harvard graduate or anything like that. Harvard trained. Um, Harvard Medical School instructor in psychiatry. He was a teacher's assistant. Yeah, so he was just a teacher's assistant. Uh, that is extremely misleading. So saying Harvard Medical School instructor sounds uh, a lot better than teacher's assistant. So yeah, the guy's dishonest. Could be wrong, but that's what I've actually read, that he was a teacher's assistant, and he says that to make it seem as though he was a professor or something. Uh, thanks for the donation, though, Jonathan. Just like sends you shit from time to time and depending on who you are those thoughts are different like when i'm walking down the street i have a particular desire for something be that not some that someone else won't have because of what my mind is it's like oh wow like i smell rosemary that smells delicious there's something in my subconscious mind that likes rosemary other people don't like the smell of rosemary other people like lavender other people like patchouli other people like rose you know there's there's all kinds of stuff so your mind sends you all kinds of thoughts like all the time I know it sounds like super basic but just stop and think about this for a second when you're somewhere your mind is going to be sending you thoughts that other people aren't going to have that means that they're coming from somewhere. It's not like universal. Your mind is specific and it sends you thoughts. And this is why people have different complexes, right? This is why like some people get anxious. Some people get depressed. Some people get anxious about something. Some people get anxious about another thing. That's because it's all coming from somewhere in your mind. So in order to get to that part of the mind, we need it to sink in. So if you calm your mind and then you tell yourself something, it's going to sink in. And then something cool starts to happen. In the same way that these negative thoughts about yourself bubble up to the surface and you have to fight them, good thoughts start to bubble up. When you start to meditate regularly and you use a sunkalp, a sunkalp is kind of like a, it's like a, a statement that you make about yourself. And you plant it down there. So like, just think about this. You have a core belief that makes you think you're lazy, right? And so it bubbles up from the surface from time to time. It's like, oh yeah, like, man, I'm lazy. Fuck, I'm lazy. Fuck, I'm lazy. And if we think about the interview today, he has the thought that I'm in control of myself. I can control my destiny. And there's thought, times that that thought bubbles up in a positive way. And, and it's actually a different thought, but at, at times it bubbles up in a negative way. He thinks that's the same thought. It's actually two separate thoughts. That like, oh, like I control my destiny. Therefore, I fucked it up. Therefore, I suck at life. Or I control my destiny. I can do anything that I put my mind to. Life is full of love and, and greatness, right? So if you do yoga nidra and you plant a sun if you if you flatten your mind, you do a mantra. A mantra is another example. Okay, so if you do yoga, you'll have the utmost confidence in yourself. Uh huh. And that somehow translates to only having to study for two hours a day. Example. Right, so you do mantra, and then you plant it deeper within your subconscious. And then something really magical happens. I'm a lazy piece of shit. I'm actually pretty good at what I put my mind to. It becomes automatic. And then change happens. It's not about control, it's not about willpower. He, like, this This guy is just such a wacko when it comes to medication. Um, he stated that he thinks uh, meditation should be, like, the frontline treatment for practically every mental illness. Like, what the fuck is meditating going to do to get rid of, like, some of these subconscious thoughts? Like, nothing. Um, maybe it'll, it'll help? Like, yeah, if you can calm your mind a bit, it might help with anxiety. But, like, if you have, uh, like, imposter syndrome, it's not really going to do much because right now you guys are fighting to overcome that negative thought every time it comes up you try to push it down every time it comes up you try to push it down every time it com comes up you try to push it down instead plant something else down there plant something inspirational and you do that with a calm mind because once the mind is calm just like you're reading something you can read something and it sinks in it goes in you learn that two plus two is, is four and then when your mind sees oh two plus two it bubble the answer bubbles up this is important you don't think about it being four. The answer comes from within. It's automatic. It doesn't require effort. Once you understand, it's it's just effort. It's effortless. It's not control. So learn how to plant things within yourself. 
calm your mind, and then you can do a mantra or you can do a sankalp. And I think yoga nidra is one of the most potent techniques to get people to a super calm mind relatively easily, and then you do a sankalp. So after you enter the state of like neutralness, at the end of the yoga nidra practice, you make a sankalp for yourself, and then you tell yourself that. Right? So it's like, I deserve to cut myself a break. Like that's a good example of a sankalp. Like you have to figure out what the right sun gulp is for you. And then each time you do that practice, that thought lands into your subconscious and it grows more and more and more. And then eventually it starts bubbling up. And now we come back to the how, why meditate and how does that make people holy? It's because when you meditate and you combine it with some of these practices, although you don't have to, when you meditate, like you change that subsurface level of self. It's underneath the mind, right? Because remember, meditation is about shutting off the mind. Then you can start writing, like you're, you're accessing the source code. Right? It's like if you hit F11 when you're looking at a website and you see all the HTML code and you start editing shit over there. Meditation lets you edit that shit on the side. Nope. That's what it does. And so if you want to start changing your subconscious beliefs, it starts with calming the mind and then reflecting and then planting. And then as you plant, it'll start to bubble up. And then your life is different. So people look at me and they're like, oh man, like you guys think I'm happy? Like I'm happy most days, right? Day to day. Like today I'm actually having a rough day. This is me on a rough day. And I have rough days too. But the difference is that I planted shit in my subconscious that bubbles up. It's like autopilot. It's like, it's like a permanent buff. Like you have debuffs and you have buffs, right? So I've had the privilege and the luck to plant some good things in myself. It's like, it's like a food buff. The, this still doesn't explain how we can study for two hours in medical school and actually get passing grades. Um... Great. You feel good about yourself. That doesn't translate to being able to only study for two hours and pass. Dominique Lopez, $22. Actually, meditation can cure every known mental disorder. No, it can't. Every human has the inherent capability to realize non-duality, which is the end of all thinking, which is a source of mental illness. That's not true. It's called nirvana, and it's not religious. Yeah, sure. Uh, that is total bullshit. Uh, unless you can show me a peer-reviewed paper... Um, or a meta-analytic meta summation suggesting that. Um, that is just totally bullshit. Buff, but it's permanent. You know, like, sometimes when you play an RPG and, like, I, I like these games that do this, that you get, like, some kind of permanent buff because you make a choice in the story, right? And it's, like, plus five to all stats because you consume someone's soul. It's, like, that's the kind of shit that I'm talking about. Talk about a permanent buff. It's not quite leveling up, but it's, like, a transformative experience that changes the person that you are and gives you, like, a plus five on, like, or gives you, like, 10% lifesteal or, like, plus five on all your stats or something like that. That's what meditation does. So a sun gulp is a particular kind of buff that you get to choose. So, like, sometimes, like, you know, when you're, when you're playing an RPG and you, like, get a boon and they're like, what do you want? Do you want a plus five to int, strength, con, dex, magic item? Like, you get, you get a prize, right? And so the sun gulp is, like, the kind of thing that you want. Do you want to practice self-forgiveness? Do you want to practice motivation? Do you want to practice whatever? So people are now asking, how do you choose um, the sun cup? I think it requires reflection. So you've got to think. Of All right. Well, um, yeah, this just, again, proves that he's a liar and a fraud. And he makes up lies to make himself sound smarter so that he can sucker people into paying him money. Uh, total absolute fraud.